well, to be honest, as soon as you could walk, you were kicking a ball um, constantly with your grandpa, your grandparents and your dad, just always kicking a ball, basically. That was the thing you loved to do. Yeah. So that was a natural progression, really, for you to go straight to a football team. And I remember when you were playing with Dave Evans' group, uh, team, you all just used to move around as a big swarm. You know, you just all followed Follow the ball. ball yeah. Just that was all what you did. That was sort of... I remember just coming down and just being so excited to like wear my Reading kit and sort of being outside the stadium and mm. stuff, uh, down at the Dome. It just sort of uh, pretty special for me, really, because I obviously watched them play in that. And so to be actually there sort of with coaches who were part of Reading, I felt really special at the time, really. Yeah, and I think that was it as well, because you, you were a supporter from when you were little. You, um, we've always, you know, been um, supporters and have season tickets. Um, it was your, it was just amazing for you really, wasn't yeah. it? And I remember you being so excited and running around showing everybody, showing your sister that you've got this kit on and stuff, you know, you were just so excited. Yeah. But I remember there was, we had a lot of worry as parents because every, it was about every six weeks we had to get, I think it was a brown envelope. I suppose you remember this. Do you remember that? I don't remember we had to, I think it was, we had to have a brown envelope and that meant he could stay on for the next period of time. And we just kept saying to him, you know, it's fantastic, just enjoy it while it lasts, you know. If it carries on, that's great, but you've had some lovely memories. Yes. Sort of preparing me for the work. Yeah, basically, because you'd go to the door waiting for your letter to come, and then you'd say, oh, it's come, it's come. So we had this going on for a long, long time, and then obviously we got to the stage where you were, um, I think you were eight, actually, and they said about signing, but I think you were meant to, they hadn't realised you were a year younger than how old you were meant to be to sign. So we waited a little bit longer and then you signed when you were, were nine. Yeah. And again, that was just special. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah. So that, that was really a really lovely moment. So special that you'd got through all those sort of younger stages. Yeah. Carrying on from that, um, I suppose coming every week to watch the matches and watch the guys, it's quite inspirational for a little one yeah of course yeah. and um, obviously we've got loads of pictures of you with Kingsley because yeah. that's what I remember when you were little as well you used to say to me mum where's Kingsley gone <laughs> so we'd be trying to search for Kingsley so that was the early stage I think as parents and grandparents we all used to go along and support you and it was lovely to be able to go and watch those matches and go on those away trips you know sometimes they'd be quite far away but it was our pleasure really to go along and watch you develop and yeah, you, you did really feel part of something special, yeah. which was very exciting for us as parents. Yeah. I can't imagine what it must have been like yeah, for we, you. We used to do like lifts and stuff, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, I remember. We used to go together <laughs> to away yeah. games and stuff, so. Yeah, I remember we used to go yeah, with my dad's yeah. van. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I recall um, when we first moved to Reading, actually, and Gabriel's got uh, two elder brothers. And they used to kick around the house. They break everything possible. I'll go to work and I'll come back. This is broken, that's broken. They've been teaching Gabriel how to play football from age about four. And um, when he was about five, we then enrolled him to a local club, Woodley Saints then. And he was there for about six months, actually. And the guy called Andy Abraham was scouting for Reading. So actually, this boy's got some talent, but they kept him there for a little while. So he went on and when, when it was about six, then he came for trial. It was quite challenging. Yeah, I mean, but, I, I was not ready to be a player on my own age group anyway. I remember um, even at Woody Saints, I was, I was so shy. Like, I'm not sure if I was smaller than everyone else, but I was, I was going to Woody Saints to stand on the side sometimes, freezing. I remember coming into the dome at like seven, eight with all, all these big players and they're all shouting and that. And there's just me in the corner, just freezing. I was just <laughs> like, calling quietly, like I was not ready at all. But mm. I mean, it was it was good to be involved. And like, obviously now looking back, it tells a nice story how you've been involved from the start and you've grown. But at that time I was so scared about so much. Like, I just like playing football, like with my friends mm. at the park and that, fine, you'd hear me shouting, you'd hear me doing all sorts. Then when I came here, I started off so, so shy, but yeah, it's good to have that's just... But you kept, you kept working though, you, yeah, you, you kept going down, it was just keep grinding at it. Reading for us as a family, I, I don't take it as a club actually, I think it's a family. And we had that kind of family thing for a long time, because you know all the coaches, you can call them anytime. You can approach them, you can speak to them, you can tell them how is he getting on. 
and they will give us one to one and say, well, you need to study as well. I remember one of the coaches used to say, you need to do your school work as well. Mm. Yeah, and I find it really kind of inclu inclusive kind of club, if you like, you know, mm. where they, they bring parents in, not just looking at the child as a number. What do you, th yeah. what do you think? I agree. Mm. I agree. I think mm. obviously it's nice that the coaches from under eights, under nights, and I know like Lewis Gota, Ryan Williams Sweets, like we always see them about even now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like what, ten years on? Mm -hmm. So I think like that's that's a nice touch that that we can still be involved and have that interaction with the coaches that it started off with. Really. Yeah, definitely they've sort of come up mm -hmm. uh, then obviously Ryan's working with the eighteens now, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. so sort of come up together. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's actually funny, I sent you that Instagram photo. Yeah, 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 it was yeah, a photo yeah. um <laughs> The one we played in the tournament for Woodley, I played for Woodley Kestrels and you played for Woodley Saints. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was down at Woodford Park, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, we used to have a fierce rivalry. <laughs> we did. Um, and I didn't actually realise, but there's a photo of me and you can mm -hmm. see you and then the Tyler background. Frost in the mm -hmm. background, which is which a pretty cool yeah. uh, cool yeah, photo. Um, I didn't know you then, mate. When so, how old I? were you then? We must have been like five. Yeah, probably five. Couldn't have been older than five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, that, but then I just remember sort of my earliest memories of sort of meeting you properly was mm -hmm. probably down at the dome, but then yeah. it was giving you lists of games yeah, yeah. and stuff. I um, don't know how that started really. Like my earliest memory is just being in your dad's van on the way. <laughs> I used I used I used to call Tom. I used to say, "Well, please, could you help me?" Oh, don't worry, Mary. I'll pick him up full yeah. time. And then, yeah, I remember we used to get a call yeah. from Mary. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. um, I had a little one as well. At the same time, it was really difficult to juggle. Yeah, um, that's good. Yeah, we saw. And long journeys are sort of made better. Mm -hmm. But you'd usually be falling asleep in the back, <laughs> like talking. Yeah, no, I was like, yeah, I didn't talk. <laughs> it's, it's, just love, it's, it's just such a special thing. You know, you can't imagine as parents how proud we are of you, really, to yeah. have come this far. Yeah. Because there have been, it's a bit cliche, up and down. It has been really up and down. Mm -hmm. And it isn't just a simple journey of you just go out, play football, and you know, it's all going to happen for you, and you're suddenly going to be yeah. a star. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, there's a lot of couple of steps backwards and then a step forward. Because yes. well, like it's brilliant just seeing like your mates, yeah, with you sort of fulfilling their dream as well as yours. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, I think that's uh, that. For, it makes it even more special. I think to see your mates doing it too. And I, and I think the boys may credit to you guys that you've really worked hard because I remember mm -hmm. when they were um, growing up, there are quite a number of boys that you were in the academy together and they were dropped and you have to do your schoolwork, you have to do training and every, like Claire said, in terms of um, when you get a review and you don't know whether you're mm -hmm. being kept or not, it was quite a challenge, it was yeah. a really nerve-wracking time. But for you to have come through all that, through her up and down, and still be here, yeah, all credit to you really, mm. honestly, and credit to the, to the club as well. You know, you are lovely boys, we would say that because yeah. you, you, you're your parents, yeah. but we want you to be in that right nurturing environment, mm -hmm. and I think you've had that opportunity. Yes. Um, the yes. staff have been there, have been very caring, yes. like I've said, not just the professional side, but the well-being side and supported yes. you throughout, mm -hmm. and that's been really important really for us. Yes. Looking at readiness in a, as a club itself is not just bringing our kids through the academy they are bringing professionals they're bringing mm. not just any professional good quality ones as well and i think that was something that sort of Eamon brought to the club mm. he was very uh, keen that it was a family that mm. we all worked together mm. and that mm. we all sort of made sure that the boys were nurtured and developed mm. as whole young men coming up mm. um and i know when he'd had meetings with my husband and i um, about tom um, and saying, you know, yeah, we think there is something here. He has got some talent. I could really see him moving forward and doing so well. Mm -hmm. But obviously there are set, there can be setbacks, there can be injuries, mm -hmm. there can be all sorts, but we're there for you, we'll support you. Mm -hmm. And really he sort of made it real for us, and, but was also very encouraging because yeah. he always felt that you would make it big yeah. at one point. Mm -hmm. And he was sort of saying, not just championship, premiership, maybe a bit further. Mm -hmm. and. I think that's something, I don't know, how did you feel when you heard things like that? Um, it obviously just filled you with confidence really because um, he obviously had brought so many players through and been so successful with his uh, sort of development of young players that when you sort of see Eamon as someone who's brought through, I don't know, Gil say Gilfie for example, who's one of the top players who's come through, 
he's obviously dealt with him and now he's dealing with you so you're trusting what he's saying because of the sort of work he's done in the yeah. past if that makes sense so yeah mm. it meant it meant a lot really to to hear that and just filled you with confidence really. and i think he, i don't know but he was really helpful as well when we were getting approached as parents from agents yeah um, ringing us up turning up at the club um he really sort of talked it through honestly and openly with us mm. about mm. what we should do and how how we should progress with this um and that was reassuring for us because again as parents Agents, what we're we talking yeah. about. This is this is bizarre. Um, do, you, do you remember? Do you remember Gabriel when one agent actually approached, approached you on the training ground? <laughs> Gabriel really panicked. He said, "What are we going to do?" So he's aiming there on the ground. He said, well, "You go to Amen and let him know this mm. guy is hustling." Yeah. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do remember. Yeah. And then he really cut the the agent and left because we don't know what we're getting ourselves into. He has no idea. Yeah. There's agent coming from here and there. Oh, we've heard about you. Uh, you need to sign. Thinking, I have no clue what you're talking mm, about. Yeah. So we go to Amen, and then one particular Saturday, this guy came onto the training. You finished playing game, yeah, and then yeah, he, came yeah. and he just he was yeah. really just hustling you around, wasn't he? Mm, but Amen mm. just advised. Yeah. Like he didn't say don't do that. He didn't say do this. He just gave his opinion. And as, as Tom said, you know, when when he's dealt with players that you've seen gone on now mm. and, and do really well, mm. when you're getting that advice from someone that's done yeah. it and seen yeah. it yeah. and it's especially for you it must be yes. quite it was quite calm and, and soothing to know that he does know what he's talking about and yeah. it's not just you guessing and mm. seeing how it goes like that he was a really genuine guy actually mm. because often like people in football clubs there's some people who sort of are just obviously especially if you work for the football club you're biased towards the football mm. club mm. Um, but you really felt as if he had your um, sort of Best interest. Your best interest mm -hmm. at heart, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because you hear a lot of other stories about sort of boys being exploited and yeah. uh, sort of treated badly, mm -hmm. but you always trusted him um, yes. because you always knew sort of what's best for you rather mm -hmm. than not just for the club. Yeah. Mm. But I think that that's that was what was so reassuring about the man. He was just you know a real yeah. <laughs> he was just really very honest and open and. Yeah, you could hear all sort of rumours and stuff, mm. but yes, if you wanted to know exactly how things were, Aim will talk to you about yeah, it did. and reassure you. It, did. Mm. it was just sort of the main person would be sort of Steve, wouldn't it? Yeah. Who's, uh, I have so much to owe Steve for, um, I think, because sort of he has just gone over and above uh, the Call of Duty, really. You remember when I, um, I'd had my operation, uh, say the start of December, uh, what was it, December the 12th? Yes, so, yeah. It was. Um, and I was fine in hospital and the sort of pain was fine because I was obviously on pretty strong painkillers but then do you remember when I got home, um, sort of the pain was excruciating. Um, nothing like I've ever felt before. Um, and sort of couldn't even move my leg and uh, I, I couldn't get out of bed. Um, you had to take me to the toilet. Um, and yeah, Steve, I remember Steve was doing a game here and uh, he had to, he, he, we were sort of on the phone to Steve saying that the pain was sort of becoming unbearable. And I remember him sort of ringing round and uh, doing all he could while he was sort of on the bench mm. uh, for one of the 23s games, sort of sorting out these uh, painkillers that had to be uh, sort of signed off by three doctors because they were sort of so strong. Yeah. yeah. He was, um, I, you know, sorry to be emotional about it, but mm. he has. I, you know, I said to him the other day, you've been a bit like a surrogate father for Tom mm. all these years. Because, yeah, he did. He would turn up on his way home, he would turn up with a big yeah. crate of ice for Thomas mm. because that would help him. And he would come in on his time off and massage your leg because obviously you'd had these six pins put in mm. your knee. Um, and he would just say to us, ring me any time. You know, uh, it's not a problem. I'm here for him. He would come and give you a massage. He'd come and check how you were. Yeah. He just took such a personal interest. In just yeah, the whole medical department were just sort of brilliant. Without them, I wouldn't, um, wouldn't sort of be doing what I'm doing now. No way. Um, and that's the thing you see. I think we've had such support from the club. They obviously have seen something, some talent in you enough to sort of support you with all mm. this. And, you know, even when you had that prolonged period off when you fractured your back, um, I remember we were talking to the um, sports psychologist saying, oh, it's 
obviously he's got some downtime because he's done his back in. He can't do anything. You couldn't even do weights. No. You couldn't even do conditioning because it was sort no. of to do with your whole core. Yeah. And they started you cooking, didn't they? With Jody, yeah. With Jody in the kitchens at Hogwood. Mm. So I hope you know you didn't suffer too much with the cooking <laughs> that you did. But um, on that, I remember because uh, I was I came as a first year scholar, so I would have been 15, 16. And I remember I was a massive fan. I was a bit starstruck at the time with all the players sort of being about. And I remember sort of cooking Danny Williams' uh, omelette, <laughs> and I was just sort of buzzing with it, you know, because uh, I just made sort of this this player I've sort of watched for years, I've just made him his omelette, sort of thing. So, <laughs> yeah, that was sort of the, uh, a bit of a funny one, yeah, looking back on it. But, yeah. Yeah, at the time, it was, I was buzzing about it, yeah. And, yeah. and that's good, and you see from a parent's point of view, you did have your doubt, you had some dark days, yeah. didn't you, to be mm. fair. Um, but because they was trying to think of you as the whole person and mm. you know how can we help you through this they were willing to be flexible yeah. and mm. think outside the box really because with all the sort of injuries I've had I used to think I've got another injury they're not gonna they're not gonna be doing that this time they'll sort of give up on me in a way not give up on me but sort of their care won't be as um, thorough as what it was before um, but that's just been the complete opposite yeah. I remember after I got my x-ray for my head um, the first that I was so sort of panicky about it. And the first person I wanted to sort of text was Steve. Um, mm. And it was sort of two in the morning, wasn't it? Or yeah. something silly. Yeah. Um, and I just remember texting him, not expecting a reply straight away, but I knew I could text him or contact him even mm. sort of that late at night, you know. Um, I knew he'd always be there and stuff. So. Every step of the way, I think the club has done everything they can and mm. more. And yeah, there's so many key people that have sort of yeah stepped up and done over and above the call of duty yeah. so um you know in my heart i think how can it not happen for you for both of you really to so have gone through all this you know it can't be for nothing god willing you know you have the health and you know the support and the talent to get you through and also to give something back to the club they've nurtured you yeah. through this mm -hmm. so this is what it's all about. Yes. I remember when Gabriel had his recent re injury on his, what did you tell? Menisco, oh, I never pronounce it. <laughs> Menisco. Yeah, yeah. And um, the support we had from, was it Ray and Steve as well? Yeah. So, yeah. They were, yeah. It was just a mess. They took us to London and came back and it didn't end there. They come into the house as well with bags of ice, yeah. like you described yeah. with Steve. It's just amazing, really, because you can pay someone to do a job when someone can actually go beyond the work mm -hmm. that they've been paid. You can see the love that they actually have, that their affection for the kids. Mm -hmm. They love yeah. their job and they've got yeah. really close to the children as well. And that for me is really important. Well, we'll call Steve before we call our GP. Of course, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Creative system. And I see what's difficult to say. Yeah. But I think it's really, 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 really credit to the club to have this staff in place. For we're lucky to have them to look after our children, really, because mm -hmm. I'm not sure what it is like with every club, but I'm fairly confident that the the support we receive when we have our injury time, I'm not quite sure whether it's available everywhere, but we're, we're just grateful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. You always knew that you were going to be back sort of stronger than you were before, yeah. um, because of all the special people that you had around you, I thought, really. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your dinners? Gosh, it was oh, a yeah. pressure as a parent. He had to, he had to have certain dinners. It was when I was injured for a long time, time. and they were what? just sort of trying to make sure that my diet was sort of uh, like as good as it could be. And I remember I had to take pictures of all my meals and send them to John uh, <laughs> and say sort of, John, was this okay? And I'd send them to him at sort of, I'd be eating say late at ten thirty, and I'd still send him a picture of my uh, ham, pasta, and cheese or whatever <laughs> I had, uh, and all my sort of meals that he'd asked me to sort of try and try and eat sort mm. of thing um but again this was even at the weekend he'd be saying mum can we take a picture of the roast before we yeah okay <laughs> then so he said have i got enough veg on it yes i said you've got four veg <laughs> <laughs> do you want another one so fit, he said, i said well you don't usually eat cabbage he said no i'll have the cabbage <laughs> as well so it was yeah you know I knew about nutrition, of course I did, but we had to go over and above, really. They sort of looked after F every, every aspect. Every aspect, yeah. Yourself, yeah. Um, amazing, really. Yes. When you have been injured, I know that you've gone on and done your rehab properly. You've put 100% effort in. You will watch what you eat. You will be careful and follow your programmes. And that's why you're here, where yeah. you are today. Mm -hmm. I always used to think that, actually. Um, sort of when I do my programme and stuff, you'd see 
the occasional person like miss out the set or something. Yeah. But I'd always think in my head, if I was to then break down again, I'd hate yeah, to sort of blame it on yeah, me yeah. sort mm-hmm. of missing that extra set or whatever. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Sort of proud moments. Well, there's been loads of them, I suppose. Um, just just seeing you wear the kit and going out. But I suppose a big one for for us was when you got the Academy Player Award. Yeah. A couple of years ago. Um, yeah. Basically, my uh, girlfriend's great grandfather used to play for Reading, um, and he obviously uh, passed away many years ago. Um, but the Academy Player of the Year award is uh, actually in his name, and it's sort of um, his memorial trophy and in the end it was actually presented by uh, my girlfriend and her nan uh, which was quite an odd sort of situation <laughs> but it was really it was really nice at yeah. the same time yeah it was lovely um, and all, it sounded a bit strange it sort of sounded a bit contrived because obviously it yeah. was Katie his girlfriend who he'd been going out with for four years but nobody knew about the connection no. and the trophy uh, uh, Morris Edelston trophy. Morris Edelston trophy so it was such a special moment and the family take it in turns don't they to yeah. um, give the trophy over and it just happened to be her nan's turn yeah. mm-hmm. so she said that she would take Katie along so it was again just such a special moment I, you know somehow there's all these connections with Reading all the way mm-hmm. through your life mm-hmm. and um, yeah we, we've got such a special special t- memories of that time and you went to Bulgaria, didn't yeah. you? And actually did your GCSEs over there. Yeah, I did about six of them. About six yeah. of them while you were playing for Scotland. Yeah. You know, and literally, I think we had the Sun newspaper from Scotland yeah. with you in there, you know, excelling on the pitch and off the pitch, type <laughs> of th- in the classroom type of thing. So, goodness, you know, there's you mm. in your flip-flops and then the next minute taking a GCSE. Yeah. Reading was so flexible and supportive and did just to get mm. in touch with Scotland to get yeah. it sorted for you. Yeah, we didn't have to do much other than just uh, sit back and, sit back study. and yeah. encourage you to study. Yeah. But, um, but again, you were sort of encouraged to do as well as you could because you need to, to have a good set of GCSEs mm. behind you as a basis for the future, yeah. should things not work out. Yeah. But also to realise your potential because, you know, the club can see that it's just as important to have educated guys as professional footballers. Mm. So, um, yeah, worked well. I'm proud of you, haven't you? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the couple of uh, moments that uh, struck out most uh, was the one you mentioned earlier on where we were here watching um, Sheffield in the FA Cup, the Youth the Cup. Youth Cup yeah. youth I remember you missed it the year before and you're really going into action. Mm. I can't wait, I can't wait. We're gonna go all the way, and then uh, we're <laughs> almost out, and yeah. then you you kind of just by the, is it within the last? Yeah, it was like last minute. I messed up within for their goal, yeah. and then uh, <laughs> it was like the ninety third minute. Just corner come in and managed to kind of bundle it in half arm, half knee, <laughs> and I just remember running over and I just and I saw you and like ah. Uh, yeah, no, that was that was great for me. I was I was, I was well. very very pleased, and then went on to play Chelsea. I'd I'd say yeah, it does mean a bit, a, probably a bit more to mm. us than uh, some other players who maybe are just brought in or whatever. Because we've obviously been here since such a young age, and we're both we're both from Reading. Mm-hmm. Um, and we both you support Reading as well, don't mm-hmm. you? So um, yeah, it's it's just so special to have. Uh, come up the age groups with each other and um, you sort of you see people come and go and um, you always know that sort of one day you need to maybe play on this pitch and sort of um, present yourself in yeah. sort of a, a, a good manner because um, you know that you're representing the club and you know the history of the club mm-hmm. and yeah and, and yeah. all the special people sort of behind the scenes and stuff yeah and I feel like as you said because we're from here you know, all of our friends, family, yeah. like, whether we play for Reading or not, we are going to be in Reading. Yeah. So then, like, that as well as coming from seven, six, through all up the years with your friends coming that maybe don't play football just around you, all, all that coming together, like, when you do step on the pitch for the team that you've been representing for all these years now, it feels like, obviously it's not the pinnacle, but in terms of, coming up through the academy that is the pinnacle moment yeah, yeah. just 
it does it, it feels mm. good. Yeah, like sort of playing for your local team mm. is sort of a thing that not a lot of people can mm. say they've done. Mm. So yeah, I think it feels yeah, pretty special to be fair. So. And also, I don't know if you know, but this one, he sleeps underneath <laughs> the badge of Reading. But literally, he's, you know, like I said, he's always been a supporter. So I know it is special to him because... What was that, a Christmas present I got? Yeah, we got your Christmas present. How many years ago? Six years ago? No, it was a lot longer than that. Oh, right, a lot longer. But literally, it's, I don't know, they must be three foot high. It's a canvas, isn't a it? A canvas that's split into three of the Reading badge. And this literally is the backdrop to his bed. And that's what he sleeps under every <laughs> night <laughs> but he's never chosen you've never chosen to take it down have no. you and you look you look a bit embarrassed but that's it's been there since i was young yeah it is but you've you've decorated your bedroom since. <laughs> so i think that just proves how special it is really um yeah it, it, it has to be you've, you've come through so far and you've had all this support and all this excitement and it's been your dream and you've been both blessed because somehow with all this support you've managed to make debuts mm. it's a credit to you both it's fantastic mm. it's very special i sort of found out earlier on early in the week um and but i never knew for definite no. but we we sort of do shape and like um sort of go through tactics and stuff in the week and i was in that starting 11 mm. um but throughout the week i still was thinking to myself this can't actually be sort of happening. There was always sort of that doubt in the back of my mind that someone would come back and then sort of be, be in instead of me. Um, and I remember sort of dad saying that to me. Dad, dad always sort of tries to keep my feet on the ground and says, listen, like, there's still a few days to go. Someone might come back from an injury or whatever and you, mm. you might be disappointed by the end of the week. But, um, but I was the opposite because I wanted yeah. to make sure that we could get grandparents there who, who need, because opposite was yeah. Rotherham, wasn't it? Yeah. It was going to be several hours journey. Uh, journey so. It, you, it did seem different because you'd sat on the bench, hadn't you, for two weeks. Yeah. And But this week, I could tell you were different. On the Wednesday, you were saying, Mum, Mum, we did shape. They took, they took the others away and there was just us group doing yeah. it. I said, right. I said, what do you reckon? Do you think? He said, well, possibly, possibly. So I didn't want to commit to anything. No, though, of Because I didn't not. want to sort of get everyone to sort of make plans to come up to Rotherham and then me not be playing. No, um, but you have to as a parent. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's, I think, where Dad that's and I... That's just football, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, but I think that's where Dad and I sort of balance out quite nicely with it. Mm. So... And the, then, sort of on the day, um, I remember, usually with 23's um, away fixtures, we have sort of paired rooms. So, say we'd yeah, be together yeah. or whatever, but with the first team, they just have individual rooms. Um, and I was sort of a bit gutted because it was sort of the night the night before the biggest game of like my career and uh, I was just on my own sort of having no one to talk to and I was just sort of laid there at night just sort of staring at the ceiling thinking what a massive day tomorrow was going to be. I mean in the end I don't think I really did sleep much mm -hmm. um, but I kept texting you because Gabe was <laughs> on the bench too and I kept texting Gabe because had sort of a sore hamstring, <laughs> and so did Gabe. Um, and I just kept asking him, like, how's your hamstring? Because <laughs> uh, I just, I didn't really know what to, what to do with my sort of spare time. I just sort of was mm. just daydreaming constantly, thinking about, thinking about tomorrow, really. Um, and he sort, of, he sort of goes through the starting team. And when I saw my name on there, I sort of, we just sort of, just sort of wanted to burst almost. Um, and I remember ringing, you and Dad, and you were just both over the moon, really. You were already on your way. Yeah. Um, well, look, we, we were just so excited to go up. There was nine of us in the end, yeah. wasn't it, that, that came up, and one of them was your best friend, Lewis. He'd yeah. come up to see you with his parents. And, yeah, when we got that call, Dad said, it, it, it's, it's, it's happening. He's on the, he's the start in 11. And I, I remember I just, you know, I, I get emotional now because yeah. it's, you know, it's what you've always dreamed of mm. and what we've always, you know, hoped would be your you would come to fruition yeah. with and it was it was just uh, an amazing moment to hear that knowing that we would be there yeah and as you know i was a yeah, bit of a I, wreck <laughs> i remember sort of my uh my sister saying that no, not my sister sorry my grandma she said um she sort of turned around and was wondering where mum had gone um and you were sort of just staring at the program just in floods of tears <laughs> sort of sort of the enormity of the day and stuff it just sort of was <laughs> A bit too much. <laughs> it was, and I, I think I remember walking up to the scene in the stadium at Rotherham, 
and I know we talked to you the night before and I knew you were actually quite calm. You know, no, I'm yeah. hearing you now saying that you were a bit like, didn't really know what to do and you hadn't slept. I was for, I was for parts, but then, but I just felt so ready for it. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Because I'd, I'd prepared my whole um, academy career for that day. Um, and I felt I had all bases covered. It was if it was as if I was going into a, an exam and being fully prepared and studied every topic. Um, because I sort of knew and I was confident in myself that I was going to go out and do fine, really. And I think that was why it hit me emotionally, because I knew that's what you were telling us and you mm. were feeling. But I thought maybe when he actually comes out, maybe the enormity of it will overwhelm you. And mm. I just wanted you to be proud of your performance. We would be proud just because you're there, let yeah. alone going on the pitch. Yeah. And I just wanted it to be everything you dreamed of. Mm. And I think it was. I remember sort of the biggest thing that people were saying to me. A lot of people text me and sent me messages and people saying all sorts of different things. Go out and do this and do that. But then I think it was someone text me and they said, just go out and enjoy it. Mm. Um, and then once they said that to me, I sort of, that was in the front of my mind. And I just wanted to go out and just not, not have fun, but just sort of take in every sort of, um, sensation that you were feeling going on the pitch and because mm. I knew that that was I was only going to make my debut for running once mm. so I needed to remember it you know so and I think I did that because I can I can I can just picture every sort of scenario leading up to the game and then during the game um, and it was that feeling when I was on the pitch ready to ready for the whistle to blow and I remember just turning around and seeing you all in the crowd and uh, I just sort of remember just sort of like I just felt just buzzing really like all sort of my wishes had come at once really that mm. you could all be there and stuff so yeah, it was... and again I think when you were playing at the at the start I remember seeing Tyler Blackett yeah. he would come over to you and I could see him having a quick whisper and I just thought he's looking after him he's just checking <laughs> yeah. he's okay and settling him down and I could see all the people you know the defenders were all there you were all together all supporting each other because yeah, it was Gareth weird. McCleary that said sort of the day before I was in a lift with him and Chris Gunter. Were you in the lift as well? I don't think so, no. Yeah, I was, well, I was in a lift with them too. And they were just sort of reminiscing about their debuts. And yeah, they were sort of saying how nervous they were going out, but I wasn't really feeling these nerves at this point. Mm. Um, so I was thinking, oh, I've obviously got that to come. Um, but then he did say, oh, it's not as bad as what it, it sounds like, he said. Um, and he said, from the kickoff, we'll, we'll pass. If we get kickoff, we'll pass straight back to you, and you can get your first pass in early. Um, and sort of that meant a lot to me, really, because uh, they're obviously looking out for me, and mm -hmm. these sort of senior pros um, obviously just wanted me to just settle down in the game. And just once you get your first pass off, you sort of you build up confidence, don't you? From there, really. So, mm. yeah. And then the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I remember. This is the day Tom Mack made his debut actually. Um, you came into my room that morning. <laughs> you came into my room that morning, you're like, oh, I feel sick here, yeah, I feel sick. And I, <laughs> I remember just looking at you, like I was on my bed just looking like, wow, like he's actually gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was so like in awe, I was thinking, wow, like you're actually about to do it. Like in three hours, there's no, there's no two ways about it, you are going to be playing. I just remember watching that game and when you hit your head, I was thinking, Oh no, like, this can't be it for him, this cannot be it. Like, how long was that, 10 minutes into the game? Yeah, 10 minutes, yeah. I remember running, warming up, thinking, nah, he has to stay on, he has to stay on. Obviously, you did incredible when you, when you played. And, and then, obviously, coming in that week and finding out that you were going to be out for a little bit longer with the concussion before it was, I then started to be in the shape, like you said, in that starting shape. Um, it got later on in the week, I think, probably on the Wednesday, was when I was most nervous. I was like, this is actually gonna happen. I shouldn't have thought that. Like, but I was thinking this is actually gonna happen now. There's no one else that can play. This is it now. So building up to that week, I was going to the gym, trying to make sure my body was all right. And then come come the day, I, I felt I wasn't nervous. I mean, I remember <laughs> dancing with my little brother in the living room and he was, he was trying to punch me in. I think Abraham, my older brother, was saying, oh, don't hit him, he's got his debut now, don't hit him. So, <laughs> so um, came in, um, I think Omar, Danny and Andy were all starting that game. So that was quite nice to know that like, I wasn't going to be the only academy boy coming in and Andy and Danny and 
I know him. I played with all these guys for for years now, so that that was quite comforting. And then um, you texted the we have this family group, and you said, "I'm starting." I said, oh, "You what?" And I was at work. I said, "He's starting." <laughs> <laughs> and my colleagues at work looked at him. What's he talking? About? My son is having his debut this Saturday, <laughs> and then I started. I said, "Saturday," I just went, <laughs> I started crying. So I got up and just freshened up a little bit. And when we got home, I said, I was just jumping. I rolled on the floor. I was thanking God. I just didn't know where to place myself like you. Mm -hmm. I started crying. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I just didn't know where to. It was like my heart, you know, when you feel like you've done this for so long, mm -hmm. it's going to happen. Because a couple of times you were on the, on bench. the bench. Yeah, yeah It's going to happen. It's not going to happen. What a Christmas present. I thought, wow. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't sleep. I, I kept praying, said, Lord, I prayed everything goes well on that day. You know, I was unlucky. Who was the guy that gave us a box again? Yeah, Liam Moore. Yeah. And yeah. then he rang in the morning and said to Gabriel, I know the debut is, kind of, is a big thing for you. I'm going to give you your family. Oh, I just started crying again. <laughs> <laughs> so what a very nice thing for him to do. You know, mm -hmm. we came here and I saw Gabriel on the beach. Okay, mom, come um, on. Come on, mom. It's not that deep. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him. I saw. I saw Thomas were down there. Yeah. I just. I just couldn't believe it. I just prayed. I just prayed. I said, Lord, I'm actually here. It's actually it's on the home game as well. It was on the pitch, and we are here. The brothers were here. We were in the box as well. I didn't know what to say. I. I was so happy. Mm -hmm. I was. I can't find any words to actually describe what I felt. To say this is a senior team. Actually, this is not. Academy, this is not under 23, this is it. And in the meantime, I'm getting texts from friends, congratulations. I said, it's not me, it's Gabriel, we should be congratulating. I'm thanking God. I didn't know where to put myself, but it was a great feeling. It was a really, really, really good feeling. Mm. Yeah. Really, so well done, son. <laughs> and I remember um, in the warm up, when we do the little possession draw, I was terrible. My feet were not moving, like I was so scared, I was so scared and then came back out. I think I had tape on my hand for the warm up then, came in, took it off straight away. <laughs> Cause I thought, no, I can't wear this, it's not happening for me today. And then I came out and I just remember thinking like, cause obviously as a 23, we all, we all watch the um, the games in the box. Yeah. And I came out, I remember thinking, oh, the boys are up there now, aren't they? <laughs> and then, when we were lining up, I saw mum, I saw all the boys and like, and I started and I was a bit nervous to start with and then like just over time it just became more just normal and we started playing well and the crowd was supporting me and yeah, and that just, yeah, and that was great. It was. It's, it's crazy watching like another young player yeah. that you play with make their debut because mm -hmm. you sort of, you live every ball that they're mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. uh, passing or heading or whatever and you sort of, you're praying for them to do as do well, well as, yeah, yeah. as as well as they can. And I remember like with, with watching Josh play with his debut and Danny, yeah, you know, all yeah, of the yeah. all of the academy boys watching them play, you just sort of sat there just just hoping that they can just have the best game yeah. that they can. Because mm -hmm. um, you want everyone to do mm -hmm. to do as well as they can, yeah. And also I think the supporters were really great as well. Yeah. They were so yeah, fantastic. Yeah. They actually gave him a stand innovation one time. I thought, oh that's not gay, but no, I said, I didn't <laughs> see that. Yeah, actually they said they stood up for him. I said, well, I didn't see that. And yeah. then later on, first were saying that yeah, they actually gave him. They were thought, well, well done. It's just yeah, that it's was, all those training for all yeah, those years. Yeah, that that was surreal. Like hearing my name sung. Yeah. Mm, uh, really I heard crazy. my name sort of. I was playing in the game in the middle of this game, and I heard my name being shouted, <laughs> and I, I just sort of couldn't believe it. But then I was thinking, no, what you need to concentrate on this game, <laughs> not what they're singing, yeah. sort of thing. But no, that that meant loads really. The support from. Yes. All the fans that I've received, we both sort of received yeah, a lot yeah, of uh, yeah. nice, nice messages, well. um, mm -hmm. and yeah, I think that that makes it extra special, really, that yes. the fans have been so yes. behind us and uh, yeah, sort definitely. of supportive of us. I think. Well, I couldn't believe how many of them went up to Rotherham. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it was a cold, horrible, yeah. grey day. It really was abysmal. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not many days that I've, you know, been you know in such awful rain on the motorway. But there were so many of them and they were yeah. chanting away and singing. It, the volume was just superb, you know. And yeah. yes, your name was a bit, and I was thinking, oh, it's my son. <laughs> oh, it's, so <laughs> it's so lovely. But then you feel that pressure. You think, oh, I hope he, he does plays well. well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, let him do as well as he can. Oh, I, but, well, I was literally going like that throughout the whole game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
But then when we came, obviously, and saw you do your debut, that was, you know, you're not my son, yeah. but I've, <laughs> I know Mary, I know yeah. you, we've, we've known you for so long. That was really special for me. I know Tom was injured and obviously had his head fracture at the stage, yeah. but it, it wasn't disappointment for him. It was just it, real elation and excitement for you yeah. because we're going, yes, go on, Gabe. And we, <laughs> we were shouting from our um, seats, you know, because yeah, it, it, it is such an amazing thing that you've both done. You know, like you say, it isn't just, you know, it, this is first team football. Yes. This is yes. what it's all about. Yes. And I pray that both of you can carry on yes. and do more. I thought it was when your name was read out on the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. Sort of the noise from the crowd was sort of the loudest cheer of sort of the afternoon before the game. Um, and it sort, of get, it sort of like gave you goosebumps, sort of thinking <laughs> like, Wow, um, he's actually sort of making his debut now. Yeah. Of. Fantastic, um, yeah, I have no words for it. It's just, 